Lagrange multipliers. What are the maximum and minimum values of f on the ellipsoid? We're going to use a technique called the method of Lagrange multipliers. Our objective function is f. Our constraint is the ellipsoid, but to use the method of Lagrange multipliers, we need to rewrite this constraint. So let's do that now. We're going to write the ellipsoid as the level surface g equals 0 where g equals x squared plus y squared plus 2z squared minus 25. Let's also review the del operator. Given a function f, del f is a vector whose components are f partial x, f partial y, and f partial z. Let's find the uh, del f and del g. Del f, I need to look at the partials, so f partial x, f partial y, and f partial z. And then del g, g partial x, g partial y, and g partial z. Once I find uh, del F and del G, I'm ready to set del F equal to lambda del G. And so I just compare component by component. First component, second component, and third component. I'd like to break this up into two cases. Case 1. Suppose either x or y or z are 0. So suppose one of them is equal to 0. In that case, for our particular function, um, the way that our function is written, we can see that our function will equal 0 if any of them, either x or y or z are 0, the function is 0. Case 2, x is not 0, y is not 0, z is not 0. We're going to simplify the equations that we found by going del f equals lambda del g. Since we're assuming that y is not 0, we can divide by 2y in the second row. Likewise, z is not 0, so we can divide by z in the third row. Go ahead and do that. Also, I do a little rearranging. And now, we're going to, um, in each row, solve for lambda. So, I have uh, three things that are all equal to lambda. And so I, I have three expressions that must be equal to each other. I'm not a big fan of fractions, so I'm going to multiply through by 4x. After I multiply through by 4x, I just look at what I have and start making comparisons. So this is what I have, and I'm going to compare the uh, first one with the second one. When I do that, I see that it has to be true that y squared equals 2x squared. Those two things can only be equal if y squared equals 2x squared. And that's because z is non-zero. Likewise, 4z squared has to be equal to 3y squared and 2z squared has to equal 3x squared. Let's add our constraint. When we set g equal to 0, 
that gives us a fourth equation. So we have four equations, and let's see what we can do with them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite the last equation using the information above the last equation. For example, uh, I, my first equation says that y squared equals 2x squared. So in my constraint, instead of y squared, I'm going to put in 2x squared. Likewise, instead of 2z squared, I'm going to put in 3x squared. I never used my second equation, but uh, putting together the other three equations, I come up with x squared plus 2x squared plus 3x squared minus 25 has to be 0. So I just gather up all my x squares and then solve for x squared. I'm now going to focus on my first, second, and last equation. So here are the three equations I said I wanted to focus on. If x squared equals 25 over 6, then x has to be plus or minus 5 radical 6 over 6. Next, what I'm going to do is in these two equations, see how I have an x squared? I'm going to replace the x squared with what it is, 25 over 6. So um, after I uh, make that replacement and then clean up, I can now solve for y and for z. And this is what I get. So I have a total of eight points to look at, or eight locations on the ellipsoid um, that, uh, that satisfy uh, del uh, f equals lambda del g and g equals zero. And what I want to do is I want to find, of these eight points, what's the maximum value that f can take on and what's the minimum value? And I'm guaranteed that uh, um, that, that will give me my max or my min. Um, of course, I have to remember, go back and compare with my case one. So um, I um, uh, just do the evaluation. I evaluate f um, at, these, at these points, uh, keeping in mind that x can be positive or negative. Now y squared will be positive. And then uh, z to the 3, that could be positive or negative. And so when the dust settles, this is what I get. All right, case 1 told me if x, y, or z are 0, then the function will be equal to 0. And then case 2, those the values that I got um, were if x and y and z are all non-zero. And it's case two that gives me my maximum and minimum value. And so I have found, I am guaranteed, that this is the maximum value and the minimum value um, of the function on the ellipsoid. And with that, we're, we're all done. So take care and have a great day.